we've got, for the males in particular, Genesis 10, a very detailed genealogy. We've got, I'd say from about post 1000 BC, fairly detailed secular history in which there's not that much disagreement between what secular history says and the Bible says pre 1000 BC, then, then it's all over the map. You have that sort of data. You've got actual measurements of, of fathers and sons to know the rate and you combine all these data and the pieces just fall into place. And that's, that's what gives me confidence that I can say, for example, L and T come from, these are letters, arbitrary letters that are assigned to, to these various branches by the scientific community. And I try to use the consistent notation that you might hear from, let's say, a genetic testing company if you get a test. I can say L and T look like they're from Abraham because I can go back to the very base of that tree. And, and actually, I should back up a second here. This whole tree is reconstructed by simply taking DNA sequences from around the globe lining them up, which is easy to do because we're all 99.9% .9 identical. There's hardly any differences. And so it's easy to see match, 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 and, th and there's a rare mismatch. And then this is really just a, a, a complex mathematical algorithm that's worked out. You just say, count the number of differences between me and you, between me and a Chinese person, between me and an African, between me and a, someone from New Guinea. And then you plug into a program, now create branches that correspond to the number of differences. And what emerges is this structure that looks very much like a family tree where you can say this many generations ago you and i had a common ancestor this many generations ago this me and the, and the chinese man had a common ancestor and so this tree in, in this particular display we have behind us is from 600 men around the globe fairly good geographic sample you've got native americans you've got europeans north africans sub-saharan africans middle easterners east asians uh men from new guinea in here so you've, you've got a good sample of the globe and that that gives us a a good picture of the overall structure and, and history. So that's, that's how you derive this sort of info. And then it's lining up mainstream history, biblical history, again, certain segments of mainstream history, biblical history, and then these differences. And it just pops out where that's, that's really what, what convinced me this was true, or to give a, maybe a, a historical example, as I was wrestling with this two years ago, what does this actually mean? Is it, is it just as simple as three mutations per generation in the DNA? Uh, it was actually an American example that, that convinced me we're on the right path. I had written, I'd read a, a book by a mainstream historian, 1491, that talked about how the Native American populations before Columbus underwent this massive population collapse. And this is now heavily debated within the mainstream community itself. But I knew there was, there was some sort of population collapse. Long story short, you can see that sort of echo in DNA. And so I thought, well, where is this? Where is this? We know that Native Americans belong to this branch, and so where is the evidence that, boom, most of them disappeared, and there's only a few survivors, and you can actually see that, and I discussed this in the book as well. And it was, so, so there's just a, a mainstream event, recent past, last 600 years or so, you know, 1492 and, and, and more recently, and there's the echo, which you don't really see that with the mainstream time scale. They'll talk about, yes, we know there's a collapse, yes, we can kind of see evidence for this, but that's not even the full story. It's, there's this, there are about 300 years population declining, and then about the 1800s, 1900s, it begins to recover. That level of, of exquisite detail from just a century ago, two centuries ago, that's in that tree as well, even in this diagram right here. And I point all that out in the book. So it's, it's all these together that make such a powerful line of argumentation. Or maybe I could use the evolutionist term. They love to criticize young earth creationists saying there's multiple independent lines of evidence for evolution. It's not just genetics. It's not just anatomy and physiology. It's all these together. Now I can say there's all these lines of evidence to point towards the biblical time scale from mainstream history and biblical history and, and all that. So when you, when you take known events in history and the biblical time frame and you study the genetics here and the information from the Y chromosome and so on, you can see those events actually. Exactly. You, you can see where they happen, which shows that, that you're, you're making a major scientific discovery here. You're saying if the Bible's history is true, this should, these events should show up, and they do. Yes, and I feel like this, this makes it such a, a powerful, popular argument because everyone has taken a world history class. Have you ever heard about the Roman Empire? Yes. You know about Genghis Khan invading? Yes, these sorts of things. And then you can say, right here in the DNA, here, here's where this event pops out. And oh, you don't really see this if you have the, the lengthy time scale. So it's not just a generic creation argument for God did it versus evolution, but it's a, it's a specifically the hero of this story is the biblical time scale, where you, you can be an old earth creationist, but you won't see these sort of echoes because you're still stretching out that timeline of history. This, this whole tree, again, they, they, time here moves from top to bottom. So they're, they're stretching that out over 
hundreds of thousands so, of so years. It doesn't make sense. You don't see the, the events in history then. Exactly. And, and to take this argument even further, one of the biggest arguments, we'll talk about this in, in subsequent episodes in the series, is evolutionists have said it's not good enough, is what they say. Not that it's good or bad, just this is what they've been complaining about. Creationists need to make predictions. They need to do, make claims that we can, we can go out and test further, that, that advance our understanding of the world. That's exactly what this does. And in fact, this has spawned, and we might have to jump ahead in these slides here, a whole new research program to uncover the history of every people group on Earth. There are tribes, perhaps uncontacted tribes, or uh, neglected tribes. They may have their own history where we don't yet know their DNA history. We don't know who they came from. This whole set of discoveries, and really this book, is, is the beginning of a lifelong process now of being able to pull all this together. And it's, it's exciting because you can connect this back to specific men, which I'll get to in a moment, in Genesis 10 and say, this is where your story starts. Christians claim many evolved from the ape like creatures, what, two to three million years ago or something like that? Six million, 13 million, the number changes. What, whatever it is, 150,000 years ago, supposedly modern man. But if you take 150,000, the, 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 the Y chromosome data doesn't fit with that. It, it's a much shorter time frame than that. For, for the mutations that you see. Yes, and if you think about, let's say the scenario, and I can say this is true, I mean the Bible's true, therefore it's true, and, and we can see the synthesis with the Y chromosome. If you take this family tree and you say this is 4,500 years, and that's the real history, and then someone comes in and says, no, I'm going to rewrite all this. Essentially what they're doing is just stretching all this out. So what you thought was a migration of the Romans at this state, now they're bumping way back into the unknown 50,000 year ago time frame, 10,000 years ago, we got, we got no way to check this, correct this, or even think about it. I mean, who can, who can really picture in their mind, this is what the world was like 40,000 years ago. We're, we're good at, yeah, I can picture the pyramids when we talk Egyptians. I can picture uh, the Persians, especially read the Bible, thinking about the events in Daniel, but 30,000 years ago, the, what comes to mind? And it, 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 that's, that's where it all gets bumped back to. So it makes history meaningless then, really. Here we can see a chart showing the Genesis chapter 10 genealogy of the Tower of Babel rebellion. Here is where some of the different people groups trace their ancestor lineage back to Noah's sons, Shem, Japheth and Ham. These charts show how the relative population size from the Y chromosome matches up with the global population size. The Bible says that we are one blood and Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson's research shows just how closely we are related to one another. 